Hi, I'm Amy. I'm the creator behind People of the Plants, and this is Corey Miller, who's come from his farm in Montana to show us how to turn a chemical tote into a Johnson Sioux bioreactor. So I'm going to hand over to Corey, and I'm going to go back behind the camera where I belong. So we are headed out on a scavenger hunt to get the materials that we're going to put together into our compost bag. Everything that we used in making this Johnson 2 Bioreactor can all be found at the local hardware store. We have included a list in the video description below. For this compost recipe, we use some ground coffee. Coffee has 10% nitrogen and is high in carbon. Ultimately, our goal is to have as much high carbon as we can. We reached out to a local brewery to pick up some spent grains left over from the brewing process. Spent grains are high in good nitrogen. High quality nitrogen rich materials are important for added diversity of microorganisms in the compost pile. We also collected some high quality fruit and vegetable waste from a local juice bar. Take a look around you and see what resources you already have on your farm. For carbon material, we used some hay and straw bales as well as tree trimmings from a local tree trimmer that was doing work down the street. Horse manure is a beneficial nitrogen source. We just like it because it dries out quicker and stores better. We acquired the tote we are using from a local distillery. They used this tote to transport hand sanitizer that they manufactured during COVID. We start with a layer of carbon material and then add our green and nitrogen sources. We want an even mix of all materials throughout the reactor. I like 60% woody or brown materials, 30% green materials, and 10% high nitrogen sources to produce a fungal dominated mineral rich compost. So we just completed assembling our Johnson 2 bioreactor. And one of the things I want to talk about quickly is what is the ongoing maintenance? Um, and so currently, now that we're uh, probably 70% moisture all the way through, our focus is going to be on making sure it gets up to temperature. So our goal is to be over 140 degrees uh, for at least three days. And then, uh, but no, we don't want it over 175-ish. The next step after we get it through the thermophilic or the heating phase uh, is a good point when the temperatures cool down to add some worms. And those worms will go through and, and deposit worm uh, compost throughout. And ideally we're getting the best of both worlds. So we're going through the thermophilic phase, we're adding in some worms or some vermicompost. Um, and then, you know, at a minimum of nine months from now, we'll open this up and it'll be ready to be applied. Since making uh, the original video that, that uh, Amy and I did, we've had a lot of people reach out to us with questions. And uh, a lot of the reasons we're, we're showing people how to make our Johnson Sue's uh, is because of all those questions. And um, we love it. I love communicating with other farmers. Um, I mean, I think I've talked to people on all the continents in the world. I've talked to people in most countries. Um, our situation and what we're doing at Grass Valley Farms. But, you know, I'm happy to help. So if you guys have questions, reach out to us on our website. Um, tips and tricks, what we do on a large scale. Uh, check out the other video that we did, uh, composting on a large scale at Grass Valley Farms. Um, don't be afraid uh, to ask for help because this is exactly what I did when I got started. I asked everybody I could to find out how to do it best. Thank you for watching People of the Plants. Let's learn together to find better ways of growing that don't damage the earth. We value your feedback 
please like, comment and subscribe below.